Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So are you like me who love to buy all kinds of art supplies and I'm always looking for different brushes, not so much paints. I like to keep the same paints. Sometimes I try different paints, but I try different medium like pencils and inks and stuff like that. And I'm always looking for a really good watercolor sketchbook. So I was recently on an outing with my mother in Boston and came upon this kind of like nomad-y kind of store. They called it Nomad, I guess. And they had like backpacks, notebooks, and a lot of sketchbooks. And they had a sketchbook from top drawer um, from this company, La Mali in Paris. And it's the thickest sketchbook, well, watercolor book I've ever seen in my entire life. Look at that. And these are all handmade pulp papers. I've always wanted to try them, but then they came in a book like this. I was like, okay, this has to be the thickest <laughs> sketchbook I've ever, ever, well, no, excuse me, watercolor sketchbook, whatever you want to call it, I've ever seen. So I thought, like, let's play with this and do a tutorial on what, what I would paint in this. I don't know. I just figured out maybe I would start doing something simple. Um, it's always good to play with different papers. And this handmade papers I've always been intrigued by. So, so today's tutorial is just showing how I would just go about starting my first page in this sketchbook and this pulp paper, um, handmade pulp paper. So if you, ever, if you were ever curious about getting something like this, I'll be your guinea pig and we'll find out if it's even worth it or not. This was only like $25. I didn't think it was that big of an expense considering that I bought Hamu, another book that was a um, similar price and it had less paper and different kind of thing altogether. Of course, it's a little bit wider, right? But, you know, like I said, it's always good to try new stuff, right? So let's get started on trying this new book. Okay, let's see what happens. All right, let's dive in. All right, so upon opening this up, I'm not gonna just paint this first page because it's kind of like tightly woven to this. I'll do the one right after that. So it's kind of like if you wanted to paint this whole section. You know, it's kind of funny. So it's gonna be really kind of difficult to have it like um, flat. Like you could have a sketchbook flat on your desk. You would kind of need like another book, the same kind of thickness, like next to it, and then it would lay flat. But I'm just gonna use this side. You know, and actually I think I, I don't know if I started to play with, I don't know if it's that side I was using or this side. No, it was definitely this side. <laughs> I'm flipping it around. I had started to sketch. Oh, I sketched on the wrong side. Okay, I'm going to sketch it in again. So I had thought of this idea of just to do, like, I drove by this house in my town. Was it my town or in my other town? I can't remember. Everything melts together these days. Um, really Christmas, cute, like, classic colonial with nice Christmas decorations. And I thought, like, it would be a great tutorial. But no, let's just concentrate on what I thought of, like, seeing um, the doorway. And, you know, it's just a simple rectangle shape. So I'm going to just draw that rectangle door. Right, straight down here. I'm kind of wonky drawing this on camera. I do everything real time. I don't like to edit too much. Um, we'll have some trim here in the doorway. Always gonna have trim. I'm gonna lightly sketch this. And then up here, like one of those, kind of like a half moon window, you know? So then like that, and then I go in and I'll hit each quadrant sketching in on those little quadrants of a little half moon window and so down here the steps would be here but I'm gonna have I want the topiaries and of course the door will have the, the four panes right two on the front one two and they could be longer and short kind of longer than this and then I'll have another one here. One, two, three, four. And the doorknob. And I'll do another indentation with my pencil going in here. This is just a sketch, by the way. So, I mean, it's not perfect. It's not going to be perfect. And I'm using just a mechanical pencil here. And now I was thinking I'm going to put a wreath on the door. So I might have to grab my eraser and just erase this little section and just draw like a little wreath hanging down and a little bow over here do 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 I'm just drawing this all from memory because I remember the doorway had this window up here like this very colonial style windows 
Um, so here I'm going to vision. I, I remember they had some kind of topiaries, but I can't remember exactly what. And they, the shadows were black, and it was a white house. So I'm just going to envision myself putting a topiary down here. It would be like a big planter. Because if the steps come down, like just like a big planter here and one over here. And then we'll have the steps kind of coming right here. And then we could either put in like the ball topiaries, which I might do. One, two. So you need the ball. And we'll make those green and we'll put like a little bows on them on the bottom. So just circles with a little stick kind of on the bottom here, connecting it. This is what you do, you just erase all the stuff that you don't like. You could do pen and ink on this too and then go paint it. I'm just going to do paint and then remove some of this here. So I could do a bow kind of here. Be kind of cute, right? I'm making it up now as I'm going along. I remember what I had in my head, what I saw. And then I'll just kind of play around with adding a little bow. Oops. See. Even I have my days when I just feel like my drawing is meh. <laughs> um, and then, of course, you can have... I'll put another little line here around this and get some like architectural details. Um, you could put sconces here. I'll just picture. I'll just make them up in my head how they would look. A little lantern kind of thing. I don't even know if that was how they would look, but I don't even know if I like that. You know they're going to have some kind of lighting here. So maybe something like the simpler. I don't know, it looks like a pot. <laughs> I'll have to make more like a lantern. I could have something like cook coming down here. That makes more sense. That's what I'll do. I was looking kind of silly before that. And there we go. And then put the band here in the bottom. Okay. And we can put a number on the house if we wanted to. I mean, I'm not going to bother with all those little details. And I would kind of turn it on its side, do little lines for the siding. And that's how you draw that. Just filling everything in. So it's just a quick little sketch. I'm going to try and make my siding kind of like not look like it's off kilter here. Pretending like I'm a ruler going across. This doesn't look ridiculous. Okay. And there we go. I've got my sketch in there. So now we're going to get into paint. Um, I might be using my Princeton 10 Aqua Elite, um, maybe my 6 or maybe my 8 long round because I can point on that. But the 6 will get the real good detail. So I'm going to play around with probably three of these, you know, and if I want to go back in and maybe use a fountain pen, whatever, I'll play with that. So let's just start with the looser, bigger brush first, which I like to do. And I'll do my greens. And, you know, I usually make my greens. So it's cadmium yellow deep with peacock blue for the light green and I add Prussian blue for the dark green. It's a little bit watery here. And I don't know how much health like how much water or how buckling it will get. This is all an experiment. So here's my Prussian blue. I'm going to grab some yellow to make the deeper green. I'll add a little burnt umber to this. Get a little bit darker. And even my first wash of this green, I'm get a little thicker with my paint. I want less water here. And so I'm just, I don't know how this paper is going to go. Okay, so we got this light green going here. So we're going to play around with the topiary and the um, the wreath first. Oh. So I, it was handmade paper. I think he said it was made, was made out of recycling goods. I don't know. Or maybe it was a different paper I was thinking about. Does it, does it go through? 
No. It's kind of wild. I mean, you're not going to have a wet on wet bleed with this thing. That I can tell off the bat. It just kind of like sits and soaks right in. So your the paint is getting soaked in instantly on this paper. So this might be a good something to be traveling with then because it's not going to buckle up or bubble up and it'd be really good for sketching. I am going to erase some of my lovely little sketch lines I have in here because I really don't want to see that many lines on my topiaries. I like to put a first wash color. I'm just kind of wiggling my brush. You see, I'm leaving some white. So let's see if I can bleed in some color with my dark color as I grab it. I can because it's still a little bit wet in here and it's doing at least a little bit of bleed. So it's not too bad. So if it's still wet, it's bleeding good. We're going to be playing around with this. These are just pulp papers. I've always been curious about these pulp papers. And I have my little. You know, it's always good to try different things. See, that's still wet, and I'm going to add a little dark. Let's see how much it bleeds. Not bad. Get a little brown in there. Uh, I'm digging it. <laughs> so here, and then this drier brush, it has a little texture to it because it's a handmade paper. So that's kind of cool. If you can zoom in and see this dry brush. See where it, it's got a little tooth to it. So you can see you can be like a nice little texture just by pushing the paint around just like that. And then you can go and add some darker color and bleed that in a little bit. As you notice, I'm bleeding mostly dark color on the right side. So like the sun's coming this way. It could be nighttime for all I know, but right now I'm just kind of like my technique is just going that way. I'm already digging the paper. This might be my new friend. <laughs> my new sketchbook friend. I have to mix up some more paint. Ah, get it more watery. It seems to just soak it right up. And then kind of sit on top of the paper with if it's wet. Similar to like hot press does that kind of thing. See, I'm just kind of tapping my brush, and it's still you can see the wetness here. So, if I go to grab that dark, deeper color, I'm gonna mix up some more of this color, it's gonna bleed in there nicely. Just took some Prussian blue in there, more Prussian blue, and bleed in there. Not bad. Now this one had that, see all that dry brush was actually nicer than this one, just kind of blobby. Let's see what happens if I kind of lift up the paper towel. I did like this dry brush technique better. It looked nicer. I'm going to add some more color in here though. Ta-da! So play around with that. I will definitely use a smaller brush to do my bow. You know, I play around with that. I'm going to do my red. I like to make my red. So I've got magenta. Put some over here. And I take my cabin yellow deep and I mix the two together until I get the red color that I like. You play around with the two colors back and forth, back and forth. It could be pinker. It could be orange. Depends what kind of color you want. I've shown this many times in my tutorial, so now I've got the red. And I had took the smaller, the long round eight, more control with the tip, getting that bow in there. I'm trying not to touch the green, so it makes a bloody mess. Because it's still sitting there, it's still kind of damp. Didn't expect that. Now I'll do these bows down here. I feel like it's just sitting there. So it's got like this, I don't know how to describe it, like the tooth, but also because it's like a handmade paper. There's no flow. You're kind of pushing, you're really pushing the paint. Does that make any sense? You're really kind of pushing the paint. It's harder to move your brush on this paper. You're kind of pushing the paint around. 
So you're really kind of sticking that paint on as opposed to the simple flow. But that's okay. It's a learning curve. You'll figure it out once you stop playing with it. So we've got those down, the reds and the greens. And now we'll play around with the, the colors that would be the house, which is like a paint gray. And the house could is white, but I'll be putting some like grays and blues, things like that. So paint's gray for the door. And since the door will be that color vein, I think I'm going to try to figure out what I'm going to do for the bottom of the topiary. So I'm just going to put this like, light gray tone. I'll kind of keep the knob white because I want to think I'm going to put gold color. Although if I just go put the paint in, I can put, sure I'm put gold paint right on top. Yeah, it's, this paint is like slowly moving across this paper. And it soaks it up. So you're getting, like I said, that dry brush technique, which could be really cool if you want to use it for certain things. What I didn't remember to do was put my ribbon. It goes up here, connecting like falling from the door. So I'll do that, and then I'll fill in my little paint screen. So I've added more water. It's like it definitely feels like hot press sitting on top, but then because of all the ridges, it's more like a cold press with the texture. So it's a combination of like hot press and cold press. It's kind of funky that way. So it will sit the paint will sit on the paper a little longer. And uh yeah. And it has a texture to it. As I'm painting it, you can kind of see it. It has like these line, little tiny lines that are going straight down in a vertical. Oop, try not to get that red. And then painting in here. Very tricky. So I'm going to start to add different colored, like darker hues of the paint gray. Let's see what we got here. It's bleeding, kind of funky. Yeah, different. I'm going to wait till this. Well, I'm going to go and put some of this in here. Really, you can just put the. The whole color, like the one whole wash in, I could have just gone like this and then gone back in and put in the details of the four panes. You can get like much darker because it is supposed to be almost black. So the gray color, I think I'm just going to go ahead and do this first. I know where the four panes are. I'll just go put them back in when it's, when it's dry. I want it to be dry. there. <laughs> Alright, so the windows, we could either make them like it's nighttime or the windows could be blackened because it's daytime. I think I'll make it daytime because I already show like it's shining light on this side and I want to put some blues in for shadows. So here are the panes put in. Going back to my number 10 brush here. I'm gonna get a little bit darker still. So I'm bleeding in a like a thicker, darker, darker hue of the paint gray. Basically almost out of the tube. And then we have the little sconces, so that would be a little dark gray here. I'm going to loosen up this paint and I'm going to start to do like details of the architecture. Just putting in some lines 
and then like a lighter gray tone. And around the doorway. See it come to life in this little window pane here. And then I'll do some more darker tones, slightly darker on the inside of it. Trying not to get it into that window. You hear these weird noises in my studio. It's kind of hard to edit them out if I'm tainting real time. <laughs> it's, you know, the pumps and whatever. Every day is something. I can do voiceovers, but I just find like it's nicer to show you in real time what it's how I do these things. So I'm doing another little line here just to give it some more architecture detail. A little bit darker still. That's a little too dark, but that's okay. And then the bottom of this little lantern. So it looks like a little lantern now. And I'll just take the tip of my brush. So you can use, you can do a lot with a 10 or a 12. It has a nice point on it and it has a nice body and it's kind of stiffer than like a Neptune series. So you can get that little line in for the lantern. And we'll kind of throw in some little grays to kind of make it look like glass. This is still damp. So it is curling, buckling a little bit, but it's not bothering me too much. I can't, I think I might have, I don't know if terracotta is going to work with this. Also a good thing is you can always try, I'm just going to grab my armor here. Um, like I showed in one of my videos, you can take a little piece of tracing paper, if this helps. And you can see, hmm, should I put a gray topiary here? Would I like that? Oh, maybe you can put a brown one. Brown pot, but usually pots aren't brown. But you could. And the brown's kind of nice. The gray's a little too much, right? So that's why you do like a little cheat to see if you like it. Unless you're actually going by an actual strict photo. But this is how you, when you're creating your own stuff. So you have to keep grabbing water because this suck, this stuff just soaks it up. It's a little cheap and how to figure out what colors you want to do before you paint them because then you're like, oh, I hated it. <laughs> so that's what I, I teach you guys, all these little tricks. Tricks of the trade. I've been painting for a long time and designing things for a long time. So I'm trying to get this lighter color in. I tell you, it's tricky to paint in this paper. Interesting. Yeah, I like the brown. And then I'll stick to the brown connecting to the topiary up top here. Or it could be green, but I'm doing brown. Coming up cute. It could be red brick for the stairs. So maybe I'll add a little more yellow to my red that I already mixed up. It could be gray, but I'm going to do like brick. So I do like a little white space in between, like little bricks. The trick about watering the paint down, like I said on this paper, is that it just sits there, like hot press. Maybe my little bricks are like too uniform. <laughs> Let's make a little wonky. Add a little color going here, here, stairs. And then for the siding, I'll just take some of the grays that I mixed up before and I'll just do little lines that we drew. Just go over them just lightly. So now I'm trying to pick up the pace here a little bit. Indicate the siding, the clapboard siding. Although today the houses, they do vinyl, but I prefer wood it's more organic and breathes better better for your health it is more costly but it is much better for you in the long run okay so i'm going to do some more architectural details going back in with that deeper panes gray with the same brush and then i'm going to go and do those little four see if it bleeds 
bleeding a little bit. Yep. Not quite dry. Not too bad though. I do want it a little bit darker on the whole door. So even though we have this dark lines, the four pane here, I do want to make the door itself even darker because it's supposed to be a black door. So I'm going to go in, loosen up some of this paint's gray, get it really kind of butter consistency and start to put some of that dark color tone. And again, see? And maybe not fill it on all on each little pane here. So it kind of looks like a nice shadow. Just fill this all in. I mean, I don't know if it's coming out the way I want it to. But you know, this is what happens when you're playing with the first time, something different. And you guys could totally do something like this. Ever go around taking photographs of really cool doors or windows? And just, you can have a whole series of doors from like a place you went on vacation. Like I did this, I tried to do this in Paris, but eh, I couldn't get the quite, I didn't really get the angles I was looking for. I'm gonna try it again when I'm back in France and in Spain this summer. I'll be teaching watercolor on a retreat this summer. Yes, and then Morocco in the fall. If you ever want to come to my watercolor retreats, a uh, good thing is to sign up on my Patreon because I give the first dibs to Patreon members and then it open up to public if they're not sold. They usually sell out pretty quick. So <laughs> that's why being a Patreon member is actually a good deal. You can get the first dibs on workshops and retreats. Okay, so now I'm going back down and adding in. I'll just look a couple more details. I don't want to fuss too much. I feel like it's going to get overworked and then get a little too messy. I mean, this kind of bled in here. So, hey, what is what it is? It's this new paper. Kind of add this darker tone here. Paints gray. And get darker in the window still. Just on the side the left side. All right, and then my little, you know, topiary containers, I'm just going to add some darker browns. I'm taking some paints, um, excuse me, burnt umber and paints gray, mixing them together. I'm going to play around with adding some darker tones. Again, try to mostly on this side because with this, my whole thought is that the sun's coming from the left going to the right which means the bricks will get darker too. So let me add some darker tones here. Getting a little bit lighter in the center. A little darker up top. And even still, it can even get even darker. Adding a little more paints gray here. You can add you know, real super details. I'm just trying to make it like a sketch some dark tones right underneath that bow. It's like a little shadow of the bow is. Right, and then on the bottom. And then we have to have something here, you know. I can just put some gray kind of tones kind of going here, like a walkway or something. Just simple. And get that brick, another pass. You know, it's coming out okay. We have put some line going across, darker tone here. So we get some varying tones in the brick, and I'll add some grays in there too. And then for the house, like the side of the, the lantern, I'm going to take some of my ultramarine blue right here mix it with the paint's gray. I want like a bluish shadow tone. 
kind of on the side here. Let's see, let's water this down a little more. See these shadows, Topiary is making shadows because the sun's coming from this way. So they're all being on the left. Right would be the shadows. And even here, just a little shadow. It's pretty simple. Oops. Zoom back on. So I feel like this is a little too white here. I'm gonna go in and add some color, some gray. And here. And fix my topiary, get that a little bit darker. Just kind of tip tap, tippy tap, that dark green. So it really feels like the sun is shining on that side. <laughs> Go back on here again. And then I'll put some of the tones into the wreath as well. Some of those darker greens. And then just play, I'm just going to go, you know, I don't want to spend the whole day with this, foot, but I'm going to add some grays into the bricks. You know, just like this. And some darker shadow underneath these little pots. And then I'll do a, I have a white door knob, I don't want a white door knob, I want a golden one, so it's just a yellow. With a little of this burnt umber. It's got a golden color. If I have to add a little red to it, whatever. There's the doorknob. You could add the light, you know, this could be lit up, but it's daytime, so we're not going to do that. We're going to add like a little bit of blue, this gray, the glass. I don't want to fuss with it too much. It's a simple sketch. And that will be my first entry. I mean, like I said, I could add some more tones just with these little... I didn't do too much with the siding. And you could have made the house a different color. All that good stuff. Go back in here and add a little more color into this white detail and even get this paint gray even darker still get some more architectural detail going in here. And there you go. Like I said, it's still kind of wet, so I have to go add it a little bit at a time. And that is my little first entry in this funky new little sketchbook. Isn't that cute? Kind of fun. Yeah, not bad. I mean, it's not perfect, but it is what it is. <laughs> so, you know, always experiment. Try different things. I'm not saying break your bank by, the, by any means, but it was a kind of like, you know, little splurge, and I wanted always wanted to try it, and I actually was feeling the paper. Sometimes when you buy it on sight unseen, you're like, mm, I don't know. But then that's the beauty of it, right? You have to figure it out. I'm going to have to play with this paper more. It's kind of interesting. And then I could have done a two page spread, but I would need something kind of, you know, next to this because it's going to be folding down all the time. So this is it. What do you think? <laughs> you could put little dots of red in the topiaries, play around with that. Um, I'm going to add a deeper green again. I feel like my green needs some help here. Right in here, topiary, tippy tap. And then up in here on the wreath, just a little bit. I could cheat and add some like bright yellowish green too on top of it if it's really thick paint and get away with it. Up in here. But I don't want to fuss too much. It's just a cute little sketch and that's all it is. So there you go, that's my first entry. I hope this was fun and informative and just, you know, gives you ideas about when you start a sketchbook of things to do, doorways, windows, 
um, I know you could, like themes are good. Themes are good because you know themes give you discipline. And because you sometimes feel like, what do I paint? What do I paint? If you have a theme, you have a discipline. So therefore, you have a like you know a call. What you call used to call them like call outs, whatever. But you have the theme helps you with what to put in your sketchbook. So say you paint like 30 days of birds and then you paint 30 days of flowers and 30 days of doors, things like that. And then, you know, as you're painting, you'll come up with other ideas and things to paint. And there you go. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by. Um, I hope this was fun. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you haven't hit the bell notification button, please do so. So you know my tutorials up. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.